Hey guys, Adam Zapp and Dog Training. Uh, today, I want to talk about science-based, purely positive dog training. Now, I've got hundreds of videos on this subject, and I'm going to talk about it again. And the reason I'm going to talk about it again, guys, is because everyday dog owners need to know the truth. Yeah. So, I was talking to a client today about dogs. <clears throat> yeah, and we was lucky enough to be working in an area where is where was able to keep the dog under the threshold for the majority of the session. But she asked me, and she could understand that, and she could see how her dog was improving. She could see because we was under the threshold the little triggers the dog's giving, and how if you recognise them, interrupt them before the dog escalates, it's easier. And the dog just like that just gave up his reactivity towards other dogs. It was so simple. But she asked the question: What happens? If she's on a narrow street, what happens when she's on a school run and another dog's walking past her? Yeah, because we was keeping the dog under the threshold and it was a very good question. Yeah, so you've got trainers out there, right, that say if the dog goes over the threshold, that's a reflection of your training. Yeah, so you should always keep the dog under the threshold because if you go over the threshold, yeah, you're failing the dog. Okay, and this comes from science. Yeah, and then science will tell you that positive reinforcement is the best way to teach a dog. <clears throat> now, let's get into that for a start. Yeah, in an ideal world, and this is why the training for the best part, we was keeping the dog under the threshold because in an ideal world, you should be keeping the dog under the threshold. Yeah, and if the dog goes over the threshold, where possible, you should then take a step back to get the dog into a better state. Yeah, it should be about trying to keep the dog under the threshold. But the reality is we live in the real world where it's absolutely impossible to keep a dog under a threshold all the time unless you live in a desert, yeah, where you've seen no people, no dogs, no animals, no nothing around, yeah, absolutely no triggers, yeah. So we then made the work a little bit more challenging for the dog, so we went to the streets where we was liable to walk past dogs and we, instead of moving over to one side to give the dog space, we actually then push the dog a little bit further to teach the owner how to deal with the dog if it goes over the threshold, how to teach the dog how to deal with the stress. Now, science-based dog training, yeah, is what people throw at you. Yeah, they'll tell you that positive reinforcement is the only way to actually keep a dog under the threshold. But what people need to understand about this is all these scientific studies where they say that positive reinforcement is the best way, most scientifically proven way to keep the dog, to help the dog, that keeping the dog under the threshold is the best way to help a dog, all this stuff. Understand that these studies conducted on the dogs are conducted in an environment that the person conducting that study can control. Yeah. So if I can completely control my surroundings, yeah, if I can introduce things when I want to introduce things and I can remove things when I need to remove things, then I can use and choose exactly the method that I'm trying to promote. Yeah? And that's what, when people say science-based dog training, that's what they're doing. These are tailored studies geared to prove a specific technique and or method. Yeah? And it's a controlled study. Yeah? The reality is, we don't live in a controlled environment. We don't. <clears throat> yeah, We can't stop Deirdre, who thinks it's acceptable to let her three little dogs go charging over to other dogs because they may not attack because they're little and she just says it's okay. They think they're Rottweilers or it's okay, the dog's not going to hurt your dog. We can't control that. Yeah, We can't control walking down the street, somebody with their dog at the other, other end of the league kicking off. We can't always control the space we have. Yeah, because sometimes you have to go down streets that aren't as wide. Sometimes you don't always have the luxury of being able to move out of the way. Yeah, sometimes you are going to come into conflict with situations that are going to make your dog go over the threshold. So why it's all well and good trying to keep a dog under the threshold? Yeah, why it's all well and good using positive reinforcement? Yeah, because all dogs need positive reinforcement. That bit is, I can't stress that enough, right? If a trainer tells you a dog does not need positive reinforcement, you need a new trainer. But it is impossible to keep a dog under the threshold 100% of the time. Now, here's the thing. If you're a trainer, yeah, and you are telling your clients to keep your dog under the threshold, yeah, that you should never correct a dog, yeah, then what you've got is your trainer that is failing you. Yeah, they're failing you because it's impossible to keep the dog under the threshold. So what's going to happen is if you've not been taught 
how to deal with a situation like that when your dog does react if you've not been taught how to teach your dog to deal with the stress you are going to fall apart just like that you will fall apart instantly yeah science-based conducted studies are tailored specifically they're adding things in when they need to and they're removing things when they need to they are testing certain methods in controlled environments yeah and they are controlling the environment but in the real world you cannot control the environment you cannot yeah you can try but the reality is people are unpredictable when you're walking down the street with your dog and that person's got their dog bouncing around off lead or pulling on a flexi lead they're not going to stop for a second and go oh your dog's nervous yeah they don't give a fuck yeah in their mind they've got a friendly dog that's your dog that's your problem and it's true it's your dog and it's your problem your problem nobody else is going to do anything to help you yeah we live in that society so what we need to be doing is stop throwing science-based freaking purely conductive studies into everyday dog owners heads we do we need to start being honest with a dog yeah post and if the trainer tells you yeah that positive reinforcement is the only way or the best way to train a dog yeah, and they use science to back it up yeah they are still pushing their own agenda on you and they either a don't know that there's more than one way to train a dog or b they only care about their method and they don't care about anything else yeah they're pushing an ideology onto people yeah the reality is you cannot keep a dog under the threshold all of the time yeah so next time somebody says science-based dog training understand that science is forever changing the other thing about science is if somebody says it's a scientific study people are going to believe it yeah but if we look at bacon yeah the amount of people one one day you're reading the paper bacon's good for you yeah next day you say bacon causes cancer one day you'll see a scientific study that says a glass of wine's good for you science is forever changing it is yeah but science is often conducted all right in a lab or in a controlled environment yeah so you can tailor the results to what you are looking for yeah it's very rarely ever conducted in the real world with real life distractions that come out of nowhere yeah so as much as we need to try to keep dogs under the threshold because it's a lot easier to work them under the thresholds we also need to be teaching people how to deal with dogs when they go over the threshold okay and positive reinforcement is absolutely essential for all dogs positive reinforcement will encourage a dog to continue to repeat that behavior but the other thing people need to understand is with positive reinforcement positive reinforcement doesn't remove negative behaviors it does not it doesn't yeah positive reinforcement simply means you're going to add something to increase the likelihood of a behavior repeat in itself yeah so it's used to encourage existing behaviors it's used to encourage behaviors that the dog offers you that you like and it's used to teach new behaviors yeah it's absolutely essential but punishment decreases behaviors punishment is also part of dog training any trainer that takes punishment out of dog training yeah is doing a dog a terrible disservice they are banking on positive reinf reinforcement working 100 percent all of the time no matter what's going on no matter the distraction and unfortunately life isn't that clear cut in a study in a controlled environment in a classroom yes you can use that yeah because you can control the environment in the real world you can't and the reality is when people are contacting trainers, they're not contacting trainers to teach their dog to give them paw, to roll over, to get in a suitcase, to do handstands. They're not, they are contacting a trainer because they have existing issues with their dogs. Okay, existing issues that are often unwanted that they want to remove. Punishment removes behaviours that you don't like. Yeah, you either add something for positive punishment or you remove something for negative punishment to decrease the likelihood of a behavior repeating punishment doesn't always mean bad reinforcement doesn't always mean good the amount of people that use positive reinforcement only and are reinforcing bad behaviors without knowing it the amount of trainers i see that are full free and use positive reinforcement and are rewarding bad behaviors and they're not even aware of it yeah because they refuse to use punishment they are failing the dog when you're looking for a dog trainer guys you need someone that's going to be honest with you you need someone that's going to be realistic with you yeah science-based dog training that is tailored around being positive reinforcement or full free training being the only way to train a dog the best most scientifically proven way to train a dog understand 
that that was conducted in a controlled environment. Understand that is a study determined to prove a theory. Yeah, it was not conducted in the real world where real things happen. Yeah, we cannot control that. Yeah, we need to be honest with people. We need to stop pushing ideologies and methodologies onto people. We need to start training the dog in front of us. If that dog requires punishment, we need to be using punishment. If that dog requires reinforcement, we need to be using that. We need to be using both of them, right? If a dog needs a certain tool, we need to open our minds to it. Just because you've never used it doesn't mean another dog doesn't need it, yeah? We need to be more open-minded about dog training. I've been working with a lot of dog trainers lately. A lot of dog trainers have been reaching out <clears throat> for our help and I've been working with them and I love collaborating with other dog trainers It's great putting your heads together with other dog trainers. That's what we need to be doing guys Okay, we need to stop cramming unrealistic ideologies down people's throat We need to be making dog training simple because dog training is fucking simple. It's not complicated. It's simple Yeah, and we need to be helping our clients the best way possible not what a study says from some fucking idiot in a lab coat. We need to be training a dog in the real world, in the real environment, and teaching the dog how to deal with stress, teaching the dog about punishment and reinforcement. Yeah? Hope that helps, guys. Have a good day.